Hello, my name is Sean Boyle and I teach at SIU Automotive Technology and this video is on the solenoid pressure regulator valve. You might be wondering why a video on just one little valve and it's because this valve is extremely important to the operation of the transmission. Basically, it controls the pressure that is fed to the solenoids and the solenoids play such an important role on today's transmissions because they control pressure to all the clutches. And this little chart that I made basically simpl simplifies a hydraulic schematic. Uh, at the top, I've got a pressure regulator valve and that creates overall pressure in the transmission. I colored it red because that's usually how it's identified on a hydraulic chart. And you can see it's fed over here to the actuator feed limit valve, which is also a solenoid regulator valve. And it's also fed down to these individual valves that control pressure to their individual clutches. So line pressure being fed to the valves to control clutches, line pressure being fed to the solenoid regulator valve, and that feeds all the, these different solenoids. And these solenoids are going to be controlling the individual regulator valves for these individual clutches. So now maybe you can see how important this is. Not only does the solenoid regulator valve regulate the pressure to solenoids like the pressure control solenoid, which determines ultimately how much pressure, oh, my fingers went away, well, um, ultimately how much pressure the transmission generates, but it also is going to regulate the pressure to the, all the solenoids in the transmission that have a direct influence over that clutch's pressure. So without proper pressure coming from my actuator feed limit or my solenoid regulator valve, I could have high, high pressure or low pressure issues with the individual clutches in this transmission. So here's the thing too, is the TCM does not have the ability to monitor this pressure. So it's assuming that this pressure is good. So that's the reason why we need to pay close attention when we inspect these valve bodies to make sure that the actuator filament or solenoid regulator valve is working properly. So how do these solenoid regulator valves work? They're actually pretty simple. In this 4L80 example, you can see I've got a valve. That's what's black here, kind of outlined in black. In green, I have a spring. Um, line pressure is fed in, that's red, and it comes in. You can see it finds its way right into this passageway, which I labeled solenoid pressures, so this regulated pressure from the solenoid. Now on the end of the valve right here is the balance area or the react, well I like to call it the reaction area. So when line pressure finds its way into this solenoid pressure circuit, that same pressure is going to find its way to the back end of this valve, to the reaction land of this valve. And it's going to move this valve over to the left as you guys are seeing on the screen. Eventually when this valve moves over far enough to the left, this portion right there is going to end up blocking off the passageway and we're going to at that point regulate the pressure or limit the amount of pressure that can find its way into the solenoid pressure regulator circuit. And it's all determined by the surface area that we have here on the end of the valve and the tension of that spring. So it really comes down to a simple Pascal's law formula which is what we have here. F stands for force and it is really related to the spring force that I have up on the spring. And then A stands for area, and that's going to be really dealing towards this surface area that I've got here on the end of the valve. P stands for pressure, and that is everything we see in yellow, which is basically the solenoid pressure. So if I know any two of these, I can figure out the third. Let's use an example. for let, Let's say that the, the engineers want 120 PSI of pressure, pounds per square inch, in the solenoid regulator circuit. And let's say our surface area on this valve is a quarter of a square inch. So I know that my pressure, desired pressure is going to be 120 PSI and my surface area is going to be a quarter of a square inch. So if I multiply those two together, that'll determine that my spring needs to have 30 pounds of force. So that spring, when it's compressed and it's in the position where that valve is basically regulating and cutting off its supply, is going to need to have 30 pounds of force. So that's basically how they figure it out. I know we don't really have to change that or deal with that when we service these. I just thought it would be good to include as part of the description of how this solenoid um, pressure regulator works. So now here I'm just showing an actual valve body that's a cutaway where I cut half of the valve, top half of the valve body off so we can see the valve body, the passages, the spring, the valve, and so forth. And then that's the drawing I used. I know it's not exactly the same, but um, you know, here's that spring that we'll have to compress to the point where we can block off this passage right here. So line pressure comes in finds its way into that solenoid pressure circuit, finds its way through this little orifice right there and pushes on the end of this valve. And once we have enough pressure in there to move this valve over, it'll cut itself off and then we've effectively regulated it. You might notice where I've identified these little balance orifices that we've got here. And those play an important role to these regulator circuits. 
The pressure that finds its way into the regulator circuit is going to find its way to the back of that valve to work on it and move it over. They put these little orifices in there so they dampen the pressure change. So that way when pressure climbs up, there's a kind of a, a, a slope to it, a gradual rise. And even when pressure drops down, there's a gradual drop. That prevents this valve from overreacting. And basically what's going to happen is this valve is going to float in a position where that portion of the valve is just covering up this uh, whole passageway for line pressure. And it's going to live in that spot and oscillate. If it, pressure builds up a little too high, it'll move over and cl close itself off. Once pressure bleeds down a little bit, it'll open back up. That lets more pressure in. So it's constantly oscillating and the pressure is constantly fluctuating on the circuit, but in, in very small amounts. And this balance orifice right there is what keeps that valve stable. This cutaway here is off of another valve body. This is off of a Ford 6F50. And one of the things you'll notice, it still operates pretty much the same. We've got line pressure coming in and that fills up this uh, solenoid pressure circuit, goes through an orifice and works off the back of this valve. And once it builds up enough pressure, it moves itself over. And I'm already, I already have this one drawn in the um, cutoff position or the regulated position. Line pressure cannot get into the solenoid pressure circuit in the position it's at now. Now, one of the things that's different about this one versus the 4L80 that we showed before is there's no exhaust circuits. On the 4L80, they've got these exhaust circuits right there. And you can see if pressure ever got too high in the solenoid pressure circuit, either through like maybe a cross leak or a worn bore where the pressure is able to sneak in there when it's not supposed to. And if that pressure ever got too high and moved this valve over, it would allow the actual pressure to find its way out through the exhaust circuit. So if you imagine this valve moving further over to the left, it would open up the solenoid pressure to an exhaust. And going back to the 6F50, you can see it does not have an exhaust circuit. So if pressure ever built up too high because of a cross leak or a worn bore or something like that, that excessive pressure would just build up. There's nowhere for it to exhaust to. So companies like Transgo, they've actually come up with a solution to deal with that overpressurization of the solenoid pressure regulator circuit. And what they do is they created a pressure relief valve that has a check ball and a spring. These parts fit inside the sleeve. And if the pressure in here ever gets above a predetermined amount, the check ball is gonna push off of its seat and it's an going to exhaust that excessive pressure. So it's kind of like a safety mechanism. Um, they've, they've determined that a lot of the failures in like the 6T and 6F series transmissions are due to uncontrolled solenoid pressure. And this is their way of preventing that high pressure spikes from potentially damaging things like torque converters and the clutch drums and the pistons and so forth in that transmission. Now let's talk about valve body inspection. And we can go with the old fashioned tests of making sure there's freedom of movement with that valve. We can shine lights in there and try to see if there's light around it. We could do wiggle tests. There's all, that, uh, all kinds of traditional tests that we can do, but there's really no good substitute for doing a good vacuum test. And um, so, you, you know, in a vacuum test, you'd isolate that, usually the balance side or the reaction side of the circuit and see if it holds vacuum. You can go to sonics.com and they usually have valve body charts where it tells you where you can check these different valves to see if they're worn out. Now, some of the solutions that you'll find out there, if you've got a worn out valve body, uh, Transgo has a really nice solution. They re-engineer the AFL valve. Now this is on the first generation, 6070s and 6F50s, but you know this is kind of a generic presentation, but using that as an example, they would actually replace the valve that's in that bore with this sleeve that would use a new valve that's a little smaller in diameter because it's got to fit inside the sleeve and a new re-engineered spring to bring the pressures back to where they're supposed to be. It even has a spacer here to kind of keep everything in a line so that way the spring is, has some stability to it. And on the later models, the second generation versions, they actually had a reamer set up. They got a reamer where you can go in and ream and place a new valve in that, the second generation. So using the 6T70, 6F50, there are solutions where you can just drop in a valve or sometimes you're forced to ream it because there's just not enough material there to put a drop in type replacement. Now superior transmission products, they take a different route. Uh, they found with the units they offer a solenoid regulator valve in, and not all units that they make a kit for have the solenoid regulator valve, but the ones that they've researched, they found that the valve has a tendency of sticking. And um, the way they deal with that is like, here's an OE valve, and you can see there's no grooves or anything cut in that valve, and these two are superior valves. And this is for the 5R55S transmission. And you can see these, they call them annular grooves that go around the circumference of these valve spools or the valve lands. 
And they serve a couple purposes. One is they store lubrication. They found that the, some of the valves are just too tight in the bore. So A, by putting grooves in there, you reduce the contact between the valve and the bore. And then B, it stores oil. So it provides a boundary layer, is what they like to call it, of oil between the bore and the valve. And another kind of um, feature of that is to provide a spot that if you do have debris, that it can actually go in there and um, hopefully not hang up the valve and have a place for it to go instead. One of the things they do different, you can see these dimensions here. My OE valve, I measure the diameter. You can see it's 313 and 8 ten thousandths, whereas the uh, superior valve is 313 and a half thousandths. There's about three ten thousandths of an inch difference. They actually undersize these valves just a slight amount to allow for that boundary air, uh, layer of oil. So like I said, that's a little different direction than what the other manufacturers are doing. And then there's Sonics. And Sonics has always been known for valve body reconditioning and they're big on reamers where you can ream out a bore and put a sleeve in there with a new valve or sometimes you'll just ream out the bore and replace the, um, the, the valve with an oversized valve riding a nice freshly machined bore. So they also do though offer drop-in uh, solutions. So when you go to their website, look at their catalog, sometimes you'll find drop-in options, but if the bore is worn out too bad, then you might have to resort to using a fixture, reaming it out, putting a, a new valve or a sleeve and a valve in. So now we'll go over to the bench and we'll look at these on live valve bodies. Just look at all the solenoids on this ZF valve body. All these solenoids are in charge of a clutch or a pressure in the transmission, and they're all fed by a solenoid regulator valve you can only imagine the problems that you'd have if the solenoid regulator valve was feeding the wrong pressure to these solenoids. Now in this case, the ZF actually has a pressure sensor and when you trace the hydraulic circuits, you'll see that the pressure sensor actually measures the solenoid pressure. But the bad thing is, they don't give you a PID on the scan tool to read that pressure. You just get a code if it fails, if the sensor fails, but you unfortunately don't get to see what the pressure is. That's Really disappointing because that would be a pretty easy way to t test to see if the solenoid pressure is right, is just by looking at the pressure sensor pit. So in trying to figure out what to do with these worn out bores, obviously I could not vacuum check this one here because it's a cutaway, but imagine you did a vacuum test and this failed the vacuum test, it was not sealing up well. Well, you got companies like Transgo, where in this case, this is a generation one here, you can put a sleeve into the valve body casting and that'll run up against a surface area that is um, unused and it'll seal itself off. It's got the re-engineered valve and spring, a little spacer there, and then a new clip that goes on the end. If you have a second generation 6070 or 6035, 6040, you actually have to go through and ream it out and they give you a nice little reamer set. And there's three separate guides or bushings that are included depending on which transmission you've got. And you install that guide in there. And that's going to make sure that reamer cuts nice and even. Now this is a first generation valve body, so I don't need to use the reamer for this. I can just use that drop-in valve. But you can see they do have a solution for the second generation solenoid regulator valves as well. And then when you're done reaming the bore, you just install their oversized solenoid regulator valve. So Sonics also offers a drop-in and a ream type solution. So Sonics uses their VB fix or valve body fixture, and it's a device that holds on to this pilot assembly and he uses this little pilot tool to go through and center the pilot into the bore and you clamp down on your valve body and that way when you go feed the reamer in that reamer is going to go in straight as can be and it's going to follow the true path of the OE bore and you don't get off centered or cocked to the side. So that way when you're done you can put the replacement valve in there and it's going to ride into that nice freshly machined surface. And here you can see on that Sonics valve, they actually have those annular grooves kind of like the superior valves. Even the OE valve has annular grooves cut into it. 
So now this is the 5R55S, and right in this passage right here is where the solenoid regulator valve lives. And with Superior, you can see we have these options where there's two different designs, and the one with more annular grooves matches up with the design that we have. So now I'm gonna go through and actually vacuum check this with the original valve, and then I'm gonna put that superior valve in there. And because this is slightly undersized, I'm actually gonna expect it to result in a lower vacuum test. But according to superior, that that's not really, it doesn't make a difference on these units. And they say this thing is fed with so much volume of oil that the bore leakage isn't much as much of an issue on this transmission as is hanging the valve up. So they'd rather see a little extra clearance and a nice boundary layer of oil in there to prevent this valve from ever sticking. So when doing this vacuum test, first doing it with the stock valve, you can see we got about 23, 24 inches of vacuum. That's a pretty good seal for a used valve body. And then with the superior valve installed, we're only getting 20 inches of vacuum, but according to them, that is perfectly fine. Another thing that I like to look at here is the balance orifice that we talked about earlier. That little tiny hole right here is the balance orifice for this 5R55S. It's actually about 70 some odd thousandths of an inch thick. Then we compare that to some of these other popular units like this 4L60, and it's about 40 thousandths. So Ford has made a much larger balance orifice to st uh, stabilize that valve than a lot of other manufacturers. When I compared the um, 6F50 to the 6L80 to this 4L60, the 4L80, and even a ZF 9-speed, they were all right around 40 thousandths of an inch. But Ford adds about another 30 thousandths of an inch or so to their balance orifice. But once again, that's an engineered orifice, and its whole purpose is to stabilize that valve so it's not overreacting and oscillating back and forth too much. One of the things that I mentioned earlier that Transgo does on the 6F and 6T series transmission on the first generation is they put this little blow-off valve in there. And this blow-off valve is basically just a spring and a check ball down there. And what you do is you take this isolator valve circuit out and you put this uh, kind of this blow-off valve in its place. And what that does is if pressure solenoid feed or AFL pressure ever gets too high, it's gonna lift that ball off of its seat and exhaust all that excess pressure off into an exhaust and protect the transmission from the excessive pressure going to the solenoids and thus uh, controlling high line pressure to the clutches and the torque converter clutch. So this is something that you need on Gen 1 units because they don't have that exhaust on that solenoid regulator circuit on the Gen 2 Ford and GM became aware of that and they modified their transmissions and now the AFL circuits have exhausts. It's all that talking about one simple little regulator valve in the transmission. I hope it makes sense how this valve is super important to the operation of the transmission. And I hope that you got a better understanding of what it does, how to diagnose it, and what to do if you find a bad solenoid regulator valve. Thanks for watching.